Thank you, folks. A message is from Job. I love old Job. If you want someone to pattern your life after, you'll find no better example than Job. It was in the middle of unspeakable troubles in his life that Job just stopped to count his blessings. He had been a wealthy man, but he had lost all of his property, every bit of it. He had seen all of his children swept away by a tornado. His friends had come, of course, but not to encourage, but to criticize. And even his wife had turned toward him in disgust, in revulsion and with evil suggestions. Many of us are tempted to find, to fold our tents in times of crisis. After all, we uh, recognize that some of life's crises are bigger than we are. And it is no sin to acknowledge that we are frail human beings. It does not show that we are failures to admit that we are, there are forces beyond our personal control. But give me the man or the woman who will not crumble in the face of trouble or hardship. And I'll give you a man or a woman who will win out in the end. Yes, Job acknowledged his humanity. He saw his pitiful condition. He knew he'd been reduced to nothing in the eyes of the world. But some things Job maintained and held on to. He held on to his own integrity. He held on to his faith in God. And he held on to the conviction that he would enjoy final redemption in the end. Job said, I know that my Redeemer, li Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand in the latter day upon the earth. So we find Job here lying on the ash heap. His flesh is dropping from his bones in painful boils. His friends have come, that is, they were supposed to have been his friends, but they came as enemies. And his wife, disparaging his very existence. So what is he doing? We find him counting his blessing. We find in this brief scripture that Job mentions three things for which he's grateful. He is praising God for these three things. It is as though Job is joining us to sing 
that great old hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. The first thing Job is thankful for and praising God for is life itself. He said, I, I should have been as though I had not been. In other words, Job said, I, I, I really shouldn't have been born. I should have been carried from the womb to the grave. It could have been that he was never born, or it might have been that he was stillborn and taken straight to the grave. And so Job is praising God and thanking him for a life itself. I wonder if we ever stop to say, Lord, I thank you that you've given me life for whatever it is worth. But God in his wisdom had granted Job life. What a blessing is life. How could I have not enjoyed all the good things that have come my way? Had, has God not given me life abundantly? I don't know why. I didn't set out to live 96 years. But somehow or other in God's plan and purpose, that's what God has given to me. And in the period of 96 years, I was married over 65 years to a lady of impeccable goodness and character. Two wonderful daughters. Three grandchildren who have made me proud. And five great grandchildren. The last one is going to be president of the United States. His name is Hudson James. And I'll tell you what. First picture I saw of him, and that th I said, that's it. That's him. That dude came out fighting. He's ready to go to bed. I just... <laughs> Would like to, I have no guarantee, but I would like to see him come to the age of accountability and put his trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal savior. Then I would be sure that he's on the road to the White House. God has been so good to me and so I can, like Job, thank him for life itself. But not only those of family. Add to them the thousands of wonderful people for whom I have enjoyed being their pastor, including our little flock at Round Mountain Baptist Church. 
I have seen God work miracles in this place. I don't expect them to be the last. So I could say with Job that life is delicious and wonderful. But he also included life hereafter. He gives us eternal life. The Bible, the Word of God, was given to us that we might be redeemed, that we might have eternal life by faith in Jesus Christ. He saith, my Redeemer liveth. I feel sympathetic toward the millions of people who serve gods that do not live. Our, Job said, our Redeemer liveth. Yes, he died on Calvary's cross. But he rose again. The Bible tells us he ever liveth to make intercession for us. I want to tell you this morning, my friend. You have one who is pleading your case every day that you live. Jesus, at the right hand of God, is concerned for your well-being. For the crises that come into your life in particular. I don't know why some folk, you know, when they have problems, want to turn away from the Lord when they ought to be turning toward Him and depending on Him to take their uh, situation to the highest order. In the second place, another blessing that Job counted uh, in the midst of his trouble was his faith. Job 13, 15, he said, though he slay me, Yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. It doesn't make any difference how difficult the circumstances may be, how much we may have to suffer in this old world in which we live. Our faith, our faith will make us strong. It was invigorating. You know, we have had in the last year or two uh, natural disasters come our way, particularly here in Texas. I don't know why Central Texas has been spared, but God in His uh, wonderful mercy and grace have seen fit to do so. We really haven't had suffered much. Oh, we had some wildfires and things like that, but God has been so good. But anyhow, out of these natural disasters, I heard folk giving their testimony. One fella said, we lost our house, but God spared our family. We'll build again. Think of it. Law lose the place you live in. You know that he was a, a man after Job's example. <laughs> and he said, we'll build again. We'll build again. 
I heard another man, another one say, we prayed, God heard our prayer, and we're so grateful. The writer of Hebrews says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. What does it mean by that? Simply this. Faith is the real McCoy. Faith is the real thing, my friend. It may not be tangible. It may be intangible, but it's as real as if it were tangible. That's what Paul meant by that. Faith is the substance, something you can take hold of, hold on to, that'll see you through. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Listen. We may try to leave the scene of our battles, but God never does. God never does. I'm sure there have been times in my life when I'd have just liked to have run off from it all. I didn't and couldn't, but God wouldn't. May I encourage you to do one thing? If you lose everything else in all of the earth, hold on to your faith. In every circumstance and situation of life, in personal relationships, in circumstances in your own home with your family. Hold on to your faith. If that son or daughter seems to have a wayward tendency and you've done everything you know, hold on to your faith. God will reward your faith, I guarantee it on the Word of God. The third blessing that Job counted on this occasion was God's, I call it God's community. It was God's people. You know, folks are always happy upon God's visitation. A home is happy. When God visits that home. A church is happy when the God of heaven comes in in fellowship among us. Nothing in all of the earth will take, that, take the place of God's visitation. Numbers Oh, we are thrilled and excited when their numbers are size. 
But nothing will take the place of feeling a sense of God's presence and power. One final word. You will be happy if you will let the Lord visit today. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Would you let him take control of your life? Every area of your life. Let God have his way. Let the Lord have his way. We're going to sing an invitation here. I don't know whether there's anyone here this morning who's not trusted in Christ as your Savior. But if there is, we invite you to come to Jesus. Let him come into your heart and life. Or if you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I, I've been saved a long time. But I need a closer walk with the Lord. I need to feel his power and his presence in my life. Share that with us, would you, this morning, say, I want to... I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. Let him have his own. There may be other decisions you need to make. Just share them with us this morning as we sing together. Number three.